Oh, hi there. Can I speak to Erica from the supporters relation team? Well, I'm calling as an individual now, just to, to, to put that out there first. But um, Unity 4J is a group for um, Julian Assange. And I was the outreach coordinator before. I am not now. But I sent this email a number of weeks ago. And we got a response back from Erica. And it was very supportive. Um, and I just wanted to talk to her specifically because it was her who came up with the positive statement. I'm assuming it's her writing. If it isn't, then perhaps I can talk to the person who actually wrote the response. Yeah. Oh, OK. So it would have been it would have come from somewhere above her, potentially what she said. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Oh, I mean, what happened was the initial email um, she sent was incredibly supportive and basically said Amnesty International um, agrees that, that this situation needs to be resolved. And, you know, quite a few supportive statements and just setting out the case as the facts as, as you guys saw it. And we were really pleased to see that. Um, and we were hoping you guys would then make it public what you said. Um, because obviously we could say what you said, but we, you know, it would have become better from coming from you. So I sent back a response as the outreach director that I was then. Um, I sent back a response saying, hey, we really want to put this out in a press release, but if you want to do it, we'd be really, really happy for you to do it. We'd much prefer you to do it. We were really, really delighted after all these years that not much has been said. And I mean, it was done in the context of the Chelsea Manning support, you see. So we thought, well, if you guys are going to support Chelsea Manning, <laughs> it follows on. There's been a petition as well, which is up to, I think, um, over a thousand anyway, signatures at the moment, um, asking Amnesty to, you know, further statements of support. But we're just a bit quizzical about what happened there. And if there is, maybe there is um, responsibilities, as you say, to the uh, Amnesty International overall, um, or, you know, that's what I was just trying to uncover, really, is is what what's the deal, really, <laughs> if that's possible. I mean, but Julian is Australian, yeah? Oh, the, what, what work could they be doing that would mean that they couldn't respond on Julian Assange? But but what would be the reason to put to put out like I don't know six bullet points of wonderfully supportive statements on Julian Assange? I'm I, I was then the outreach director, um, so, you know, so asking you from a large organisation. There's three thousand of us working online. We're sort of like a non-violent online army, if you like. Um, and there's an awful lot of people wanting to know what Amnesty is up to here because it, so now we're thinking well maybe it isn't such a bad time to try and ask for your support. Um, so, you know, we were just quizzical about that. I mean, um, Julian Assange was given an award by you guys, by Amnesty International. So to desert him when he's been six months in solitary confinement seems odd. First one was five very supportive comments that even if you just made those public would be um, a, a breath of fresh air, frankly, to a hell of a lot of people online. I don't know if you realise quite how many million people support WikiLeaks, but I mean... It's huge, and to to not have Amnesty do this when it's about human rights and an Australian who's being very much um, a political <laughs> refugee who's being abused right now, tortured, because the definition of torture is 14 days uh, in solitary confinement. He's been six months, and I'd like to understand a little bit more what the barrier is here, and perhaps you can put me through to someone who can explain exactly what is the barrier and where is it coming from. I did speak to them back then when I was the outreach director. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm just not doing it now because I've got an awful lot of work to do and I have just stepped down and someone else is doing it now. That's it. But I am calling as an individual, a concerned individual. I mean, put it this way, we're at the point where we think that there should be a campaign to to um, to fund Amnesty International to to say we will pledge funding to you personally, get a campaign of people who say we will do that, but only in the circumstances where you will speak out for Julian Assange in some way. Um, that is, seems to be the best step for us to proceed to try and force a hand. And, and if there is a blockage, I really, really would like to know who to talk to to find out who that is, what that is, the reason for it. And is it international? It's not coming from within Australia? Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I should speak to them then. Maybe maybe that's the best way. If you guys are hamstrung, can't, can't really do anything, even if you wanted to, then perhaps I need to speak to the next person up. How
how else could you explain it when someone's human rights are being abused in such an appalling way when they're such a hero? I mean, how else could you explain it? It's like Nelson Mandela of our time. Seriously here. You must see that, yeah? Yeah, but he's the one who's uncovering them as well as everything else. So let's, you know, let's save him first so that we can have free breath, you know? Seriously, like he's the one who's getting the information out there about the kind of human rights abuses that you guys can then fight for. So why are we actually abusing, abusing his rights quite happily? And so I really need to talk to the person that is causing this blockage, please. And, and I'll talk to them next week. It can be internationally. It doesn't matter. I'm calling from New Zealand anyway. Sweet. Thank you very much anyway. And I do hope that you support Julian Assange, even if you can't within your organisation. Be great. <laughs> Just have a look at it. Look at the facts. Um,